I find user groups really helpful for in some ways, some of the similar things I was just talking about. I like to connect with real developers. What are you doing? What are you working on? Um, so for example, when we first moved to Seville and um, we were talking about the stuff that Israel and I were talking about the stuff that we'd been doing together in, in our team and saying, obviously we thought test-driven development was a little bit out there. Not everyone's gonna write their tests first, but a lot of developers were saying they're not writing unit tests at all. And we were like, oh, right, okay. And you get a sense for like, you can gauge where is the development community generally, where, you know, if you're gonna be telling them about like advanced IntelliJ idea use for test-driven development with continuous delivery, and, and they're here going, I don't know how to write a unit test. Like you're not doing advocacy properly. You're not helping these people. You just, you know, it's, it's a massive disconnect. So it's really helpful for sort of figuring out from from my job point of view as a developer advocate it's really helpful for research purposes but it's also because i'm really interested in our community and what we're doing what we're doing right and what we're doing wrong or not great i'm just kind of curious about like how are companies working these days um so for example things i don't know about are you using docker like how are you using docker what's docker for you know the sorts mm -hmm. of things that that i didn't get to to work on when i was doing engineering because um it wasn't invented yet um so you still use it i still use it for research purposes um so yeah so those are the, that's i think that's the main reason i'm still involved in the community um, and I get a you can again from a selfish point of view I can get a lot of feedback on things like I often give the first pass of my talk at, a, at the local user group so I can have a friendly audience who will come to me honestly and say I didn't understand this or this didn't make sense or or this bit's really great so mm -hmm. it's it's good for that sort of thing but mostly it's just good to connect with people and and find out like what are they up to what's what's good what's bad like what's fun or like again eventually maybe one day maybe there'll be someone working for a company and you'll be like, yeah, I'd quite like to work for that company. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you, you were talking about that a bit from your perspective. Do you think user groups give the same kinds of advantages to people earlier on in their career and finding their feet a bit? I, I, I think, I'm, just, I'm just thinking about the stuff that you were, say, you were saying uh, at the beginning about... Um, just starting to you know, kind of soak in a little bit about what it's really like and you know what 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 the local yeah. local environment you know job environment and stuff's like i think for i think for juniors i mean i would highly recommend juniors people just start well honestly i highly recommend recommend anyone to to join a user group whether it's virtual or in person but for juniors i think there's a huge gap and, and my colleague Helen's done a presentation about this actually there's a gap between what you learn at university or in boot camp versus what you actually need to do in your job um, and when we were in the London Java community, so Barry, who was running the London Java community, was also running the graduate developer community. Um, and there was, obviously, it was a good thing, a lot of bleed between, the, well, mostly from the, the graduates to the London Java community, because the graduates were like, what do I really need to know to, to get a job? What's it really like to, to work in the industry? Do I need to learn... Um, you know, do I need to learn the solid principles? And you'd be like, no, you need to learn Git, right? You know, the, the, it's a very different set of set of things that you're going to need to learn. And and again, one of the things that one of the things a lot of the graduates ask is, they 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 come out of university or the boot camp or whatever, and they just see how huge the the ecosystem is. Like even if it's just Java, or just the JVM, mm -hmm. but like if you expand it to web and all the rest of it, it's like there's so many frameworks, so many technologies, so many things to learn. And as soon as you get on, on track with one, then that becomes out of fashion and something else comes and then Docker comes and Kubernetes. And, and it's not just you know, about languages, it's about infrastructure. And like we said, communication skills and architecture, and it's enormously overwhelming. Uh, and you feel like, you feel like you just got a handle on on the stuff you needed to, to pass whatever you needed to pass and now you've had your eyes opened to wow I don't know anything and there's no way I'm going to be able to learn any of this stuff let alone all of it but coming to a user group I think and speaking to people they're like no I'm not using Kubernetes and Docker I'm doing Java but only this bit of Java and it's really important that you know these four git commands but the rest of it doesn't matter you know, mm -hmm. and, and getting a sense of what's really important. It's a bit like learning a new natural language. Like I've been trying to learn Spanish, obviously, for like six years, uh, more, more than that. We moved here eight years ago and I'm not fluent in Spanish, but I definitely I can order a cup of coffee. I can get a taxi to take me somewhere. You know, I can do those core things and then you build around that. It's the same thing with technology. You don't need to know all of Docker and all of, I don't know, Scala or whatever it is. You just need to know 
you need to know which bits you need to know and, and going to a user group will give you a much better sense of like what's really important and and what's not important i also think and this is something i've been really trying to to do with my work as a developer advocate it's really important for senior people who are experienced with lots of years in the industry to say i don't know about Right? Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of things I don't know about. I have done JavaScript in the past. I have been a web developer in the past. I don't know the JavaScript frameworks right now. And, and I'm fine with that. If I end up working in a, in a team where I need to know that, like we we're talking about learning, I know that I can learn that, but I'll learn it when I learn it. I'm not going to learn every single JavaScript framework now, just in case I need one of them later on. That's yeah, fine. Yeah. You know, and the I, same I, with Docker. I, 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 don't, I don't think that we as an industry do a very good job of defining what the ground rules are the the the, the, the kinds of the, 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 you know what are the things that allow you know you and i that that have some ex people that have some experience to be able to judge how much we have to learn about a particular technology or a particular practice or stuff what, what are the things that allow us to to pick and choose you know and steer our learning because there is too much to learn it, there is there is almost zero value in you learning the entire command set of git or, right. or you know every, every last attribute of i, I don't know um react js or whatever i, I don't care i i i i'm a reduced instruction set programmer i there's right. lots and lots of stuff that i don't know and i don't care about and it seems to me that part of the skill uh, and the experience that the benefit of experience is to be able to more quickly and more accurately choose the things that are worth you know that you need in order to be able to achieve some outcome that that's kind of a i'm sorry i'm advertising my book but but that's kind of the sort of stuff that was in the back of my mind when i started writing my book was to try and figure out what those sorts of things were that you could look for to try and steer you through that course because i don't think that there's i think that's a difficult problem as one you you you, you, you one of the things that you said just then resonated with me i did um i did a video quite a long time ago now on my youtube channel that, that was focused specifically at junior developers and giving them some advice and one of those was you know nobody knows everything and you know the start you know and it's it, it, ignorance is not a problem that's just a fact of life for software developers in their career and that was the one that landed most i got loads and loads of comments from people relatively new in their career so, oh i've never heard anybody say that that's a great thing to you know we could because i don't know i don't know why that doesn't you, that doesn't say, translate, but it's it seems obvious to you you and I at our stage in our career because we're we're used to know, knowing that we know nothing, you know, yes. <laughs> almost I, and dealing with what, it. I think what we see when we when we go to conferences or when we look at videos or when we read books, what we see is someone with experience giving their very well thought out, very well planned experience on that thing they know really well. Yeah. And you're like, oh my goodness, this person, he, he, because usually he, it's not always a he, <laughs> it, this person, he really knows what he's talking about. And like, I don't really, I'll never be that good. But of course, what that person doesn't say is, okay, I know all about Java, um, but yeah. I don't know anything about Git or, or yeah. like we say, I don't know anything about JavaScript or I've never, I've only worked in client server. I've never worked in microservices, whatever, it, you know, and, and I think that's what, one of the things I've been trying to normalize with some of the advocacy I've been doing is, you know, one of the reasons I do live demos on stage is because it will go wrong and be like okay pair with me tell me what you think this is that's going yeah. wrong what have i done and it's always something different you know you can't predict that sort of thing and i really yeah. want to normalize like we had with a pair programming experience you don't know what you're doing half the time and things go wrong and yeah. if you work together you you can find a solution as opposed to this this attitude that we sometimes see in our in our industry of ha ha you don't know what you're doing i'm better than you like i yeah. don't care like, yeah. I don't care if you're better than me. Like, you're better than me at something, and I'm better than yeah. you at something else. And that's, yeah. it's, it's not a zero well, that's, sum game. That's, yeah, that's, that, that's, that, uh, that's what it's, it's one of the things that I like so much about pairing uh, is that everybody's better than everybody else at something. And I want to learn the things that you're, I want to learn from you, the things that you can teach me. And, I, you know, in, in, in payments, I will, I will try and teach you the things that, the things that, that I know. And, and that's one of the so benefits. Well. That's what worked so well in our team, I think, because yeah. we were a team of, um, you know, we had, we came from different places. We we worked in, we had worked in different parts, parts of the industry. 
some of us geographically different places and we all came and we all we all learned the good bits from everybody nobody dragged anyone down the yep. juniors asked amazing questions like i yep. remember the first few times the juniors would ask me so i had what 10 years experience mm -hmm. and the juniors would say why are you doing it this way and as soon as you find yourself answering because I always have done it that way. You're like, hmm. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you get challenged to think things through and yeah. then working with people like um, people like Amir and yourself who knew IntelliJ Idea really well, like, oh, wow, I should really learn how to do these things. And we all mm -hmm. leveled up. No one dragged anyone down. There's no yeah. slowing each other down. It's, it's just, yeah, we all learn off each other. This clip was taken from my podcast, The Engineering Room with Dave Farley a monthly podcast with some of the brightest minds in software engineering. You can find full episodes on all your favourite podcast platforms, including Spotify, Apple Podcasts and Amazon Music. Your support helps us to bring the, you these regular episodes, so please leave your positive review on your preferred podcast platform to help us to continue to grow and bring you great guests and their insights. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs>